even if there was a glimmer that I could do something where I had control over what was happening and more freedom, mm. I was going to go for it. Mm. You, even if I just, you know, like it was like this little bit of light coming through, like, go that way, Liz, mm. go that way. And I never knew, like, if you would have told me then what my life would look like now, I'd be like, you're crazy. You know, being a published author, I'd mm. be like, I majored in math. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> you know, that's, that's not me. Um, I think it's, I had faith that if I kept just doing the next right thing, mm -hmm. that I would make something work. You know, we never see the whole path or know. You can't know when you're starting what it's going to look like. And it's important to have visions and um, ideas and goals and, and have those thoughts of what you want to create. But if you just keep putting your f next foot forward, doing the next right thing, you just need to know the next right thing. You don't need to know all of the next, like the next 10 right things, yeah, right? Yeah. Just like take the next step because that will reveal the step after that. Yes. Yeah. So and profound. I think that's, that was somewhere buried in me and I didn't know it. I don't think I could have articulated that, mm. but looking back on it, I think it was something to that effect. It's so beautiful. And I think it's such a profound comment. I mean, the next right thing. I mean, we were like, just make a film and like, well, how do we get it out there? And then well, we don't know. And then like the next thing, and then it le <laughs> one thing leads to the next, you know? And I, I think Jack Canfield talks about this idea that, you know, <clears throat> you can drive a car across America in the middle of the night using headlights and only see like a hundred yards in front of you. You yeah. don't need to see the whole journey, yeah. you know? And I think that that mm -mm. is such a profound concept of just taking that one next correct or right, or just what feels right step. I mean, and that's... What feels right step, absolutely. You don't even know if it's right or not. There's yeah. no there's no confirmation if it's the next right step. Yeah. I really think that comes down to you yes. and like what feeling you have mm -hmm. of what you should do. Um, and something that I think is so profound about, you know, this analogy is that what we think is the next like 10 right steps, as long as you take the next right step, it will reveal the next right step. Yes. It'll be so different than what you thought it was, yeah. right? Uh, absolutely. It'll be so different. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think what, what you're speaking to deeper down is that, and many people are going through this, and I experienced this because we, we thankfully have so many great team as part of Food Matters and over the years employed hundreds of people. And the, a lot of the, the, the archetype of the people that want to come work with us on the mission of helping share this, this message with more people around the world is that they're frustrated with their current work environment they've maybe been pushed into study like you were pushed into mathematics let's say maybe by your parents you know I was pushed into studying you know we, we all get sort of angled into certain careers and journeys and then we end up sort of towards the middle or end of that road and we're like hang on I don't love this road anymore you know and there's this struggle or and and I, I sort of speak about this this typical archetype of someone who might be working in a legal firm or you know, in, in administration or, and they're just love nutrition and natural medicine and herbology and like all this information about stress reduction and breath work. And yet they go to work and they sit there and it's freezing cold air conditioning and they're covering their, they got to wear covered shoes, you know, and they, they feel right. tra trapped, you know, <laughs> and there's this, now I feel like with the, you know, the explosion in popularity, of the internet over the past 10 to 15 years uh, in particular, has provided so many amazing opportunities for individuals to go and create these sort of micro businesses and micro movements, should I say, because I really feel like, you know, at Food Matters, we dance this line between philanthropy and commerce. We're a philanthropic organization that we exist to create content to help the world heal. And yeah. we need to ask for money because we need to fund creating more films, employing the people to put it all together and doing that. So there's this, this, this delicate dance between philanthropy and commerce. And I believe that there's a really pow it's a really powerful era for that. And yeah. there's so many more opportunities now than there was 10 years ago, like we were figuring it out. So next question, once you sort of completed, you know, you've gone off and studied nutrition and you're like, oh my God, I've got all these ideas. How, how, what were some of those first baby steps that you took and, you know, you mentioned started, like just started putting some things online. Like what, what did that look like for you and what did you learn in those really early stages? 
Yeah. So I want to address something you said really quickly um, about, yes, I'm here. We're here to create these videos to make the world a better place. And we have to ask for money to pay for it all. So I, in my opinion, what I've learned, and I think a huge part of my success has been undoing the, what has been wired into my brain from society, that it's bad to make money. Mm. And you can have a business that is here to impact people and serve people. And I think a lot of health coaches, and this is so woven into my journey and James, I think it is into yours as well. The reason I love what I do is because it helped me. I went on that journey first, right? Just like you were saying, you put the, the oxygen mask on and then you want to shout it from the rooftops because you see all of this other people that need that information. And that's so much of the fuel that keeps, keeps everything going forward in the business going. Um, but I think it's been created by society to, to wire us to think that you can't do good in the world and make money, mm -hmm. that those two things have to be mutually exclusive. They're not mutually exclusive. They, are, they can be beautifully interwoven together because money is neutral. It's, the person who has the money's viewpoint of you can do so much good with the world. I know you guys do so much good with the world. A portion of my profits every year goes to, to organizations that I want to support to help feed hungry kids and get kids education in the world. So there's nothing wrong with making money. You can decide what you do with that money. You can put that into so many good things. You can give people jobs like you do. Think about how many people you just said employed hundreds of people you have given meaningful jobs to. So I want to get out of people's heads that there there's for any reason, any, um, that it has to be a correlation of, you know, making money is bad because the more money you make, the more lives you can impact, mm. right? Because you we're paying for jobs. Yes. And, you know, I think about running my blog as a good example, right? So I have to hire sometimes, you know, a developer or like, you know, someone, you know, this, someone to come in and do some code or to do, do something to fix something. I want to pay that person a great rate. Yeah. I want them to get paid well so they can go buy healthy food and live the life that they want to live. Mm. I don't want them to have to go eat fast food and, you know, not have enough money to, to buy the good food. So in order for me to pay people a great wage, I have to be bringing in money. Yeah. So, right. It all becomes this like machine that, that works, that works together. Um, I want to go back to your question though, because I think it was, what were the first few steps? Yeah. What were the first few steps? I mean, we're, we're, that was a great point about, you know, money psychology. And I think it's so important to think about that. And I agree that if, if, if you start to clear out some of the negative beliefs, potentially as like Tony Robbins would talk about around money and limitations that we have on ourselves around yeah. abundance blocks, so to speak, then it can be so beneficial to it's been beneficial for me should i say in being able to be more successful in the space employ more people give back more we're building schools we're helping out with nonprofits all around the world and that yeah. to and on top of that the people that are interacting with us as a business purchasing uh programs studying online with us are able to then use that to create an incredible positive impact in their life so it's a triple win or i call it a winathon that's the ultimate the ultimate <laughs> yes, goal a winathon so win a -thon. so um my, my part of the other part of the question was getting started okay we we jumped ahead, like jumped a gun a little bit there but it was very important that we spoke about that yeah. <clears throat> these first few steps that you took you had no idea of the path ahead of you but you just started what did you just start doing and how did that sort of flow on to the first sort of areas where you were able to successfully start turn this knowledge into to impact yeah. So like I said, this was so many moons ago that there wasn't a lot of information on what to do next. So I was just, and I think because it was, you know, so long ago, it took a lot longer because there'd be like, you know, I'd write a blog post and then I wouldn't write one for months because I didn't know that I was supposed to keep that updated or it would take a little bit of time for me to get the next piece of information. So I, it certainly wasn't a quick process for me. And like I said, I think people starting now have such a huge advantage because there's so much, so, so much out there to get started right now. Mm. Um, so I don't know if it's, I don't even know if I can think of, I was just being clunky, you know, going, I started a YouTube channel. I did, you know, random things. I think now though, to make it relevant to the people listening, if you are getting started, um, I tell people start a blog, you own a blog, you own the content that you put on it. You do not own social media. Mm -hmm. You don't own anything you put on social media mm -hmm. um, or any type of other website. So build a solid platform on your own blog. A blog can immediately establish you as an expert in your industry. Um, and I think the first steps would be, you know, it, even if you need to research what a blog is, the, the word blog is weblog. It's supposed to be 
you know, it started as this idea that it was a log, like a diary on the internet, the web, yeah. and we still call them blogs. Um, but figure out what you're passionate about, what you want to talk about. I tell people to narrow in on like one or two or three things they want to talk about, mm -hmm. um, and start a WordPress blog. 